A warm greeting. Today is Thursday, June 15, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, we will be discussing a strong tropical wave that is emerging from Africa. This system has the potential for cyclonic development during the upcoming week as it moves west-northwest over the waters of the tropical Atlantic, possibly heading towards the Northeast Caribbean. Since last Monday, I mentioned that we would be monitoring one or two tropical waves that will encounter unusually favorable conditions for cyclonic development. This is atypical for the month of June in hurricane seasons. Today's update will show the changes in the forecast from various meteorological models and the different factors we will be monitoring, such as wind shear, to get an idea of the potential intensity and the possible paths this disturbance could take if it develops into a tropical cyclone. I also wanted to briefly mention that the GFS model is once again indicating the possibility of development in the Western Caribbean, as we can see in the following forecast. The GFS model for next Tuesday shows a tropical cyclone forming just north of Honduras. However, remember that the GFS model tends to have biases in developing cyclones in this region early in the season, and most of the time, this development does not occur. In fact, in recent weeks, it has shown development in this area and then completely changed the forecast. Currently, it is the only model showing development, so for now, the possibility of development in this area is dismissed. We will remain vigilant in case any other model shows a similar scenario. An important note about this forecast is that you can see that the GFS model, in what is likely a false forecast, depicts a strong cyclone moving towards the southeast of the United States during Wednesday and Thursday as that strong tropical wave approaches the Caribbean. I mention this because if, by error, the GFS model shows a cyclone in this area north of the Bahamas, it can affect the forecast for this upcoming tropical wave. It is likely identifying stronger wind shear than what the tropical wave will actually experience when it approaches the Caribbean. Later on, I will discuss this interaction and why we should be cautious with the intensity forecast from the GFS model in relation to the tropical wave we are monitoring from Africa. If we zoom in on the infrared satellite image, we can clearly see the tropical wave located over the waters of the tropical Atlantic, which is currently generating showers and thunderstorms near its axis. This is definitely one of the strongest tropical waves we have seen in the past few weeks, much stronger than what is typically found in this area this time of the year. Yesterday, I discussed the different factors that are contributing to the gradual cyclonic development of this disturbance. If you're interested in understanding why the conditions are likely to allow for cyclone development in this area, I invite you to watch a video I recorded yesterday. In recent days, we have noticed that the various meteorological models are becoming increasingly aggressive in developing this system. Today, the majority of them are indicating the formation of at least a tropical depression or tropical storm. As a result, the National Hurricane Center this morning assigned a 20% probability of cyclonic development to this area over the next seven days. In fact, in the latest tropical outlook, these probabilities have increased to 30% due to the models now showing a stronger system and slightly more favorable conditions for development. I suspect that these probabilities will continue to increase over the next few days as the disturbance moves over the warm waters of the tropical Atlantic. We can also see this increase in the probability of development in the ensemble members of the European model. In today's afternoon run, they indicate a 60% to 65% chance of at least a tropical depression forming. We continue to see a trend of forecasting better conditions for development, and it is possible that we may witness the formation of the third tropical depression very early in the hurricane season. This is quite unusual when we analyze the climatology. Most tropical systems that form in June do so in the Western Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, or southeast of the United States. The region between the Caribbean and Africa rarely sees cyclone development in June. I also mentioned that if we observe development in this area so early in the season, it is likely an indication of a hurricane season that could be more active than what has been forecasted so far. When we examine historical data, we can see that only five cyclones have formed in this area since 1851, and the majority of them remained weak tropical storms. This makes it a very rare event and gives us an idea of how favorable the region is due to the warm ocean temperatures and the lack of significant El Niño influence in this area. This is something we will be closely monitoring in the coming months as we approach the peak of the season. Let's now discuss the forecasts from the top meteorological models. First, the GFS model shows a faster development compared to previous runs. For example, by Saturday or Sunday, it depicts a tropical depression forming well south and southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. It maintains gradual strengthening at least until Tuesday and Wednesday as it approaches the eastern Caribbean region. This model follows a west-northwest trajectory and by the end of next week, it approaches the northeastern Caribbean region. However, the cyclone could weaken as it may encounter wind shear in the eastern Caribbean. Similar to yesterday, 
at the moment it appears that this disturbance will not have the potential to become a strong cyclone or a hurricane. We anticipate it will reach a weak to moderate tropical storm status. However, we will remain attentive to any changes in this forecast. It is important to remember that the GFS model's forecast is greatly influenced by the development of a cyclone that may not actually occur. Therefore, we need to be cautious regarding the intensity it shows in the latest runs. A model that may provide a more realistic forecast is the European model. It indicates the development of a low-pressure system between Saturday and Sunday, possibly followed by a tropical depression on Sunday night or Monday as it moves in a similar west-northwest trajectory to the GFS model. By the end of next week, it approaches the northeastern Caribbean region, but with a slightly more organized system compared to the GFS model. This forecast from the European model seems to be more realistic, considering that the wind shear shown by the GFS model, associated with a cyclone that will likely not form, may not represent the actual scenario when it approaches the Caribbean. However, this is a long-term forecast, and we will have to monitor how this development unfolds and how conditions may vary in the coming days. We also have a very reliable model, the United Kingdom model, which currently shows the possibility of a tropical depression or tropical storm moving northeastward towards the Caribbean between Thursday and Friday. It depicts a somewhat disorganized system, possibly due to the potential impact of wind shear when it reaches the Caribbean. In terms of trajectory, since it is a long-term forecast, we still do not know how close it may come to the northeastern Caribbean region. However, note that the majority of the GFS model ensemble members that developed this disturbance indicate a trajectory near or over the northeastern Caribbean by the end of next week. But I must mention that many of them even dissipate this disturbance before reaching the Caribbean, possibly due to wind shear. Again, a forecast with such a long lead time can have a significant margin of error. The ensemble members of the European model also show a weak to moderate tropical storm moving near or over the northeastern Caribbean region. Also, remember that if this disturbance strengthens more than anticipated, it may take a trajectory further northeast of the Caribbean, and the impacts on this region could be less severe than what the current runs show. I understand that the key to this forecast will be to see how much it strengthens before reaching a longitude of 55 degrees west and analyze the conditions of wind shear in the eastern Caribbean when this possible cyclone moves over the area. For example, take a look at the afternoon run of the GFS model today, where it develops a low-pressure system from the Caribbean towards the eastern region of the United States, but it keeps it quite weak, which reduces the potential wind shear that the tropical wave we are monitoring might face. This can be seen in the blue colors on this image, indicating that the wind shear could be relatively low when that tropical wave approaches. In fact, that's why in the latest run, the GFS model is a bit more aggressive and depicts a moderate tropical storm moving just north of Puerto Rico in about nine days. However, in other runs, the GFS model did develop a strong cyclone towards the east coast of the United States, but that scenario is highly unlikely as it would generate strong wind shear, which would keep this disturbance extremely weak, possibly remaining as just a tropical wave. I mention this because we will need to be very cautious, especially with the forecast from the GFS model, which is likely to have a misleading idea until it corrects what is possibly a false forecast of a cyclone developing in the Caribbean and moving northeastward. For now, I lean more towards the forecast from the European model but remain vigilant because a long-term forecast can undergo many changes. Well, that's all for this video. I will continue to monitor this situation in the coming days and keep you informed so that you don't miss any of the videos I will be recording. I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are watching me on YouTube. Just click on the red button below the video that says subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this video. Remember to like and share it with friends and family. So, until tomorrow for a new update, see you later.